Hold on. Yes, that's right. It's the Survivor Know It Alls are here live on a Wednesday night after Survivor Merge. And oh my God. Uh, it was the old uh, swing vote switcheroo, and we're gonna break it all down here live. First, let's let's bring in uh, the man who gets a fishy award every week for outstanding analysis. Uh, here he is, and he hates people who flip at the merge. Stephen Fishback. Rob, what an incredible episode! I was actually shouting at the television. I feel like this has to be one of the most twisty tribal councils we have ever seen, with more reversals. More switches, more last-minute shenanigans than, than than maybe ever. Like seriously, m maybe ever. I too soon for the hyperbole. We got we that we got too no, much. No, the hyperbole. This is exactly when you go with the hyperbole. It's like right now, and then you you know you have more like reasoned assessments later. It's now like is you, the time. No, you and I are like uh, crime scene. We're like CSI. We're like crime scene investigators, and now we just gotta walk in, and there's like a house, and there's just dead bodies everywhere, and now we yeah, just need yeah, to like, sort like, of, like oh my god, go dead through. bodies everywhere. What what's your reaction? That's the human response. Yeah, we we got we gotta start like swabbing stuff. We gotta start making chalk outlines of people, and yeah. uh, we gotta sort it all out. We gotta send things back to the lab. So. So much to get through here live on a Survivor Know It All's Wednesday. Thank you guys so much for joining us here live. Uh, we've got uh, almost a thousand people uh, now that are joining us here live on a Wednesday night to talk about uh, a very crazy episode of Survivor. We've got the chat room, hashtag RHAP, and you can also leave your comments on our YouTube channel at uh, robhaswebsite.com slash YouTube. And if you want to watch this after the fact in the video version, if you're listening to us on the audio feed, you can always do so on that same YouTube channel. Okay, Stephen. So, uh, really, really uh, exci exciting night. Of course, we are going to speak with Sarah tomorrow morning. My pick. Very sad to see her go. Oh, I've been saying it every week. I've been saying Sarah's going to win it. I know, based on the editing, based on my understanding of the game, Sarah's going to win it all. I see the edit, and I was so wrong. I have to eat crow. I was. I just knew nothing this time around. Yeah, you know nothing, Stephen Fishback. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we'll we'll talk about everything that happened, and of course, then on Thursday we will have our podcast with it's a Moret cast, Stephen, Laura, and wow. Sierra on oh, one podcast. Moret. So you're gonna be like a Rob sandwich, like she, like Sarah was a Sarah <laughs> yeah. sandwich, but yeah, Rob sandwich coming up tomorrow, uh, yeah, and then yeah. we'll, so we'll get those questions up for you guys uh, to ask the Morets on Facebook. Technically, uh, Sierra's in Easton, but you know what I mean. And then we're gonna ha also have the Survivor voicemail segment. Nicole's gonna be with us for the voicemails, and we're going to do them early in the day on Thursday. So get those calls in uh, either tonight or as early as you can on Thursday morning, uh, either at robhaswebsite.com slash voicemail or 323-282-RHAP. All right, Stephen, we're, I guess we got to start off here with Chaos Cass. Wow. Uh, in full what, effect. what terrible play. Let's just, I think also, so like, as twisty and turning as that tribal council was, I think we can agree that it was some of the worst play we've ever seen. Am I frozen or are you frozen? One of us is frozen. Okay. No, some of the gone. worst play we've ever seen in the history of, show, of the show. And I think, you know, Chaos Cass has got to be up there, right? So you're saying that in general, Cass's play in this episode was some of the worst play, or is Sarah also? Oh, Sarah, Cass, LJ, and Tony. Like, what is going on? Everyone's voting for the wrong person. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll talk about who gets the fishy later on, Rob, but you, you may not be who you suspect. Okay, great. Well, let's talk about uh, this decision on Cass's, because uh, like, Cass seems very happy with herself. She feels like this is a great move. I think you agree with me that this is not a great move. Not at all a great move. As Spencer immediately says, you know, no chance you're going to win the game now, Cass. And, uh, you know, historically that's... I don't want to say that about Cass because I now believe I know nothing about Survivor. No, I, I don't want to say that for sure about Cass. No chance she wins the game, but uh, historically people who flip from one alliance to another uh, alienate their alliance horribly. They lose all those votes. They pissed off one alliance. They're, in, they're not about useful to the other alliance, um, so uh, it's, it's a tough one. Well, it's very ironic also to have Spencer tell Cass, see, you have zero chance to win the game. Because oh, yes. in the preseason, well, famously Jeff Probst said about Spencer, just a 0.0% chance to win wow. the game. So, uh, so there, there could be, like, Cass could have a better chance than Spencer due to, like, 0.1, like if she's at 
And uh, not only... So, um, Cass has a 0% chance to win the game. Spencer has 0.0. And 0.0 is the emoticon for Morgan. Did you know that? (laughs) (laughs) So, uh, let's just talk about why this was bad. Because I think to a lot of people at home, they feel like, oh, what a great move. Vote out the swing vote. Uh, was didn't that, didn't somebody do that on Survivor the Amazon one time? Oh boy, said, man. Uh, stop, stop boy, talking about that in ten years, huh? Yeah, why don't why don't we vote out the swing vote? It's a it's a great play, but it's not a great play for everybody. And for Cass, let's talk about why that's a bad move for Cass. Well, so the reason it's such a bad move for Cass, Rob, is that she. You know, she's not acting strategically, right? Like, let's just talk about her motivation first and foremost. She's acting because she's annoyed with Sarah. She doesn't like Sarah's demands. She Sarah calls her a bully. She doesn't like being called a bully. Tasha's being nice to Sarah. Cass wants people to be nice to her. So she's acting out of emotion, not reason. She wants Sarah gone because she wants her friends to be friends with her again. Um, and, and, and you look at it. And at least from the viewer's perspective, Sarah, right now, before she flips, has a lock on the final three. She's in the core alliance of the majority alliance. Her six is ready to take out the other five, and then she's in with that three brains tribe. So if she doesn't flip, it really looks like Sarah, uh, that Cass, I'm sorry, has a very good shot at the end game. Um, by flipping, suddenly everyone hates Cass, and uh, and she's got a very slim shot at the end game. Now, I know I'm going to put myself in the position of a viewer, a viewer with a long memory and a long time Rob as a podcast listener, who is going to say potentially, "Hey, Rob, I remember a couple of years ago, you know, two and a half years ago, at the time of the merge in Survivor South Pacific." John Cochran pulled a pretty similar move here. Sure. And at the final 12, he left Savai'i to vote with uh, Upolu. Is that right? That's uh, right. And he, to give that to eventually to not pull rocks and to avoid a tie and to vote with Coach's group. And while Steven said all along that was a bad move for Cochran, Rob, you applauded the move. And you said that was a good move for Cochran. Now, we all yeah. know how it, how it worked out. And it didn't turn out to be that great a move. Right. But sticking, right. sticking, there, sticking with Savai'i wasn't, wasn't so great either. And so if you're that person, you're saying, well, what is the difference? Why did you think that was a good move for Cochran at that time? And why do you think this is a bad move for Cass? And I think the reason is because Cochran correctly perceived that he was at the bottom of Savai'i. And he was probably the sixth person in that six-person alliance. Whereas Cass, I believe, has incorrectly perceived her place in the six-person uh, tribe of the new of the new formed Apari, where she thinks, oh, Sarah's the leader now. And now Tasha has gone off with, and she was like a jilted lover. And she acted irrationally to hurt Sarah and not move in the best interest of the alliance, and I think that's where Cass screwed up. Well, well, Rob, there's another huge difference between Cochran's move and Cass's move, and that's right now in the game, Cass's alliance had a six to five majority. When Cochran made his flip, they were five to five split. So Cochran was going to have to go to rocks and maybe risk being rocked out of the game, you know, for an alliance he didn't care about uh, versus Cass. She has the numbers. Next week, it's 5-5, to or if Cass is fully flipped, it's 6-4. to We don't know where Cass stands now, uh, now that Sarah's out of the game. But uh, Cass is taking a dominant alliance position and making it, at best, a wash. And uh, Cochran was flipping from uh, from a a deadlock. You know, I mean, as bad as I thought his move was then, I think uh, Cass is worse here. Yeah, I agree, because uh, for the reasons that you just said, that's even even better. And th- the worst part is that they completely outmaneuvered the new the new Solana tribe at that tribal council. Oh, my because God. They played two idols, and they still had the, ro- the wrong person. And I have to say, Spencer particularly sold that brilliantly, because that they... So Tony plays his idol, but he played it for LJ. I liked when he says... Uh, Jeff, I'd like you to uh, validate my idol over here, and uh, like it's a like it's parking ticket. No, uh, it's, you, you val- he's got Jeff, such a great you, sense you of humor. Validate here. Um, 
So he goes ahead and he does that. And then LJ totally, uh, in a hold-up road-like moment, says, oh, no, I want to play my idol for Tony. And they're like, you know, infinity fiving each other. And Spencer's like, oh, oh, no, oh, no. They were all like, look like they're so pissed. And they had it perfectly that they had Jeffra. Uh, well, you know, I, it does seem like they switched it to Jeffra. Like, I feel like they actually probably were pissed that Tony had an idol at that moment because their plan was to take out Tony. But when when um, LJ played his idol, they all looked like, oh, no, like. Uh, oh, right, 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 right. Yeah, um, so they did a good job of selling that to the home audience. Um, the, uh, I, I gotta say, this is why I love Tony. I know Tony gets on some people's nerves, but, like, for me, this, like, his sense of theater, the fact that he, first he pulls it out, or at first he says, I have the idol, then he pulls it out, then he gets it validated by Jeff, then he plays it, but on someone else. Like, Tony gets that it's a show, he's making it fun to watch. I love Tony and his, his like, big theatrical moves. And, yes, he was wrong. He was wrong twice, um, and he was wrong about... You know, the, the fact that he could sway Sarah, he was wrong about just the fact of the idol, he was wrong about, you know, playing it on LJ, but uh, he's he's got so much theater and, and so much fun, I just love watching him. Yeah, and I'll tell you the difference between Tony and, and Russell Hans is that where Russell Hans would be mean-spirited at times and sometimes would get into, like, the personal attacks, or this person's a bitch, and this person is stupid, and this person is whatever, uh, Tony really doesn't give us that. You know, it really is seemingly so far, it's all about the game. And he hasn't gotten nasty about anybody in the confessionals. And I feel like if you can keep it in the mischief part of the game, yeah, I'm a liar, I'm this and whatever, but I'm having fun as opposed to, you know, you know, tell us horrible things about these people that we're also voting out. I feel like uh, Tony's in, in a good spot right now. And, and, you know, some of his reads were dead on. You know, when, when Sarah says... You know, I'm gonna I'll, I'm gonna make up my mind at tribal council. You know, Tony correctly says like, "Oh, come on, like don't don't feed me that. I I know you're not with me if you're telling me you're gonna make up your mind at tribal council." You know, like and uh, you know the way he and he was almost like generous with you know when I think it was Trish was like complaining about how a party was just like kowtowing to Sarah and Tony's like, "Yeah, of course they are, and we should be doing that too. Like she's the swing vote. We need her. He you know he's got good reads on people." Yeah, no, he's done. He's done very good, and I think at I certainly underestimated him in the preseason and probably through uh, a lot of the season because he's such a character and you know at times comes off as two dimensional. But the guy does really have an understanding of the game. Do I think he's the you know you know the the greatest player ever? No, and, and is he? Do I think he's going to win the game? Probably not. But I think that he definitely is a above average player, Stephen, and and maybe could by the end of the season we could call him a great player. I, I you know what? It's possible. I mean, great, great, yeah, maybe, but it's possible. And he's got so much energy, and I feel like I really feel like there's no question Tony's coming back. Bring him I back. Like Tony, Bring him back. Tony season two is gonna knock everyone's socks off. We're on Team TV. Yeah. On the know it all. Yeah. Okay. Now. Almost lost in all of this, talking about how bad of a move we thought Cass made, is we have have not even begun to scratch the surface of the horrible night for Sarah. Horrible, horrible night. She goes from being everyone's pick to being the one voted out. And, uh, uh, Rob, as you said, the swing vote, you know, Survivor of the Amazon, you know, if you play both sides, you're going to piss people off. Well, there is something to this, and this is not just true about Survivor, but also in life of, oh, I'm in a good spot here. And Sarah totally overplayed her position uh, here. And so she really is like trying to say, well, what are you guys going to give me? Well, what, what are you guys going to give me? Over here, I'm going to have to call all the shots. And now, I, if, well, if I go over here, I want to decide who goes home. And she does it in such a way she refers to herself as I'm the president, <laughs> I'm she's in a, charge. She's, a, she's the queen, right? I'm the queen. And she also, not only that, her reads are really bad. That she's insisting, she's like, no, the vote is either going to be Tony or it's going to be LJ. Like, those guys, they don't have idols. Yeah. And, that's, and everyone's like, ah, what about Jeffra? And like, no, no, that's stupid. We're, that's terrible. That's a horrible idea. And Jeffra is exactly the right person to vote out in that situation. You know, like, anyone watching this, if you're a longtime Survivor viewer, you know that the person to vote out is the side person in the alliance. They're not going to play the idol on her. In Sur Survivor Samoa, another great parallel, uh, where, you know, they all, I think it was, like, 
John Fincher, the great John Fincher, suggested, hey, or maybe it was Cardona, suggested, why don't we vote for Kelly? You know, there's no way she has the idol. And uh, Dave Ball's like, no, we're voting for Russell Hance. And, uh, uh, you know, then Russell planned the idol, and he played it on himself. You know, it's a great idea, and Spencer tries to get it through, to his credit. It's a great idea to try to vote out the person who is that ancillary side person, and Sarah, uh, to her discredit, and ultimately to her, to her, you know, eviction, uh, is will refuse to let that happen. Really, for Sarah and Cass, it was like a night where two two wrongs just made did not make a right for either of them. <laughs> no. And they both they both could not get over this uh, this feud. And it really just tore apart this group. It was uh, a really terrible job. From the beginning of the episode, where Cass and Sarah are having the conversation, and I summed it up on Twitter, it was really a battle of tell me versus show me, where right. Sarah's like, hey, I'm with you guys. And well, Cass is like, well, that's great, but you know, don't flip on us, because you know, all you did was one vote. And, she, and Sarah's like, well, why, hey, what, what gives? Because I, I, I said I'm with you guys. Well, why are you questioning me? And so... It really just devolved from there, and at no point did either person say, "Okay, long term, what you know, what's best." There was no reason for Cass to think that Sarah was flipping on this vote, and it, it you can make an argue for what Cass did if she thinks that Sarah was going to flip on them, but there was no evidence to support that Sarah was going to flip. Well, and you know, I was, and, and you're right that it started at the start of the episode, and I agreed with Cass at the beginning. You know, Sarah's like, how dare you question me? And Cass is saying, well, you haven't really made a tough vote with us. Of course I don't trust you yet. You know, like, that's a very reasonable assumption. I mean, what's not smart or reasonable is to tell someone, of course I don't trust you yet. Uh, and then what's even less smart is for that other person to react to that with, like, such volatility, for Sarah to suddenly, like, freak out about it. You know, and then just like the emotional escalation from there, and you had that long fight with Tosh at the water, where Tosh is just trying to placate everyone, and these people are just reacting so emotionally. And Cass at that moment, I was really surprised by her, because Tosh is obviously trying to placate Sarah. She's obviously trying to tell Sarah what she wants to hear. And Cass takes it so personally, like, well, you're taking Sarah's side. Like, they sounded like two little children. Yeah. I totally agree. I read it exactly the same way where Tasha was like, okay, well, she, it was like Tasha's like, okay, I get it that Sarah is the swing boat. Let's not piss off Sarah right now. Let's tell Sarah whatever she wants to hear because Cass is good. She's in our alliance. I have right. no reason to think that Cass is going to go out there and flip to the other side. I'm sure Tasha's, Tasha is like, you know, I got to make sure Sarah doesn't flip. I got to make sure Jeremiah doesn't flip. And Little do we know that it's actually Cass is the one that is thinking about going to the other side. Well, I think this is actually an important lesson, and I think it's something that actually often gets lost on television, is that you do really need to pay attention to your allies. You know, like, just because you're in an alliance with someone, that person isn't with you forever. And you see, you know, I remember my, myself that, you know, there was a lot of times when I had to, like, go do extra things for my allies, and I got a lot of, quit, uh, a lot of flack on on social media, like, why why are you, you know, doing this for JT instead of for Aaron? Well, it's because I wanted to stick with JT. I, well, I need, I, JT was my ally, but, like, that only goes so far. If you're not tending to their feelings, they're going to they're gonna feel jilted by you. And it's true. You've really got to show that extra love to your allies. And so, you know, on the one hand, you say, well, uh, you know, Cass is wrong because she didn't understand what Tosh was doing. Tosh also should have been like, hey, Cass, obviously you're with us. You know, obviously you're my number one. You know, you just need to, like, hit those beats with your allies. You know, how funny is it that this big debate we had in the second episode, uh, or was it the third episode, of what should we do? Do you keep Spencer or do you keep Jatia? And it's like, well, Spencer's not going to be loyal to Cass and Tasha. Uh, they need to keep Jatia around. It's like, oh, wait, how about this? Cass isn't going to be loyal to Tasha and Spencer. <laughs> You're so right. So, oh, man, Spencer's the only one with his head screwed on straight. I mean, I would say Spencer is like a, a lock to win, but I, I've got no, you know, absolutely no well, desire to predict anymore. Well, he's got a real uphill battle after tonight. It's, it's a long road, but I don't think, you know, I thought Cass is a little, like, cute. Chaos Cass is a little cute remark, remark at the end. Well, that's a, you know, long way to the end was, I don't think she's 100%, you know, with, with Solana now. I think she's smarter than that. Well, now she's got to, you know, she's got to, you know, Sesternino it up a little bit, you know. Oh, okay. she's gotta, is, that, is that the verb? She's going yeah. to bounce around now. The problem yeah. is, you know, in my in Survivor the Amazon, re in reality, you know, 
I said, okay, I'm going to start swinging around at seven. It's a different game to start swinging around at 11, you know, yeah, like a yeah. longer way to swing to the end. Like I started, you know, swinging back and forth at seven and, you know, spoiler, I didn't make it to the end, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so to start to start this game of, okay, I'm going to vote with these people this week and this people this week, this people this week, like, you know, it's going to be tough. And can anybody trust Cass in the game? I mean, now, the good you thing, know, I'm go sorry, ahead, go ahead. the thing she has in her favor is who's voting out Cass, you know, it, that you would think at the very least she has, you know, okay, they're going to vote out the other four people. You know, if we have a Pagong in here, which I still don't think is going to be the case, um, she still has four more weeks to sort of work something out. And even then, when you get down to this group plus Cass, are they really going to turn on Cass first? I don't know. Like, I feel I'm like not, you know, I'm not sure, threat. Rob. Like, it's a classic move that the person who flips gets voted out next because the new alliance doesn't need them and their old alliance doesn't want them. You know, I, I, it's a, it's just class. You, you, Candace Woodcock, it happened to her in Heroes vs. Villains. It happened to John Fincher in Samoa. It uh, happens. And uh, uh, not, I, don't, I think Cochran actually lasted a little longer, but it often happens that right after you flip, you're gone the next episode. So uh, it's, a, it's a dangerous position. Well, on the subject of chaos, Cass, uh, do you buy the theory that Stephen that uh, that if you create enough chaos, chaos is a ladder that could take you all the way to the top? Um, is that did someone say that? Is that was that a confessional? That's, that's the little finger theory. Oh, oh, I mean, that's I feel like that's more Tony's Tony's perspective than Cass. That's definitely the Russell perspective, right? Burn the socks, you know, douse the fire. Uh, whatever, save the dog, whatever his strategy is. Okay, uh, let's talk about the immunity idol. And uh, so we do get the Tyler Perry idol. It is in play, the idol with special powers, but uh, it doesn't look like anybody really made a fuss about it in this episode. I'm still in my heart of hearts hoping that that's not actually what the immunity idol does. Like, I'm praying, and I know everyone says it is, but if they do that, like... That broke the C Yule season. You know, it like ruined the season because it destroyed strategy. And uh, I really, I really hope that's not the case. That would just suck. Well, I'm telling you that it, it is the case because well, Jeff sucks. Probst, it sucks, Jeff then. Probst told us it was. That sucks. Yes. I'm sorry. I'm yeah. sorry. No, uh, I'm not happy about it, Rob. It's gonna have a season of Redemption Island and all Hanses, and everyone gets their own super. Tyler Perry Idol. That's where this is going. Yeah, I th I think that's where it's going. Yeah. Um, how about let's see. Also, uh, from the episode, um, did you feel like the other people, Tasha and Spencer in particular, where were they for like the um, from the time that we see Tasha sort of try to squelch the beef between Sarah and Cass? Like, where were they during all of this? Did they not have any suspicion that Cass was actually double-dealing? I mean, I think you know, like, how crazy the merge is, right? We're seeing a very small portion of it, but, like, you got to assume everyone is scrambling with everyone. I mean, you know, when Trish says, I've got a good relationship with Sarah, like, uh, you do? I mean, I guess they've been together for, you know, uh, I'm sorry, with uh, with Cass, you know? Like, why, how is that possible? You know, you've known each other for five minutes, as far as I can tell. Um... But but uh, you know I I think that's probably just it right like they were there was just so much stuff happening and you know at the end it just it just happened too fast yeah boy Sarah really just uh, how qu what a quick spiral this was I mean c can you think of anybody in recent memory that went from such a good position where coming into the episode we said uh, they probably have you know if not the best chance the second best chance to win the game to being out? No. <laughs> I, I, I'm trying to think of someone who fell apart. I mean, you know, I mean, there was a Corinne moment in uh, Karamoan where, like, you know, she just totally flubbed it. But that was different, you know? Yeah, like, we didn't think that Corinne was going to win the game. Yeah, and, you know, like, that was, like, an insurrection that had a chance of succeeding and it failed. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, Aris was doing... But, no, yeah, Aris was never... You know, he always looked like he was about to ready for a downfall. I don't think so, Rob. Yeah, this the is really Aris thing was, was like three episodes in the making. We saw a lot of people saying like, hey, we gotta, we gotta get out. Uh, you know, Jervis and, Ar and Tyson were talking about it for a while. Like, I can't think of the person. Uh, no. Maybe uh, not since Hunter Ellis. Is it, I mean, it's gotta be somebody <laughs> since then. <laughs> well, you know, let, let us know. Like, leave us a message saying who the, who's, 
Who's at a worse and, and more precipitous spiral than Sarah? Yeah. Marion Silva says JT, uh, maybe for, from Heroes versus Villains. But the JT thing, that JT didn't even get voted out in the episode that they wrote that letter. Like, that was, and, it took a whole nother week. So that was, like, over two weeks that he and the went other thing, to that spot. Okay. And the other thing was when JT and Heroes versus Villains was, like, skating on thin ice. You know, he was bouncing from alliance to alliance. You, you saw that something was about to catch up to him, you know, and he just didn't have... Didn't have the certain special something that he had in Toga Chains. I wish I could put my finger on what that was. That, yeah, not that, uh, thing. That, like, yeah. Marion Silva and uh, Jose Salgado say John Carroll. That, but boy, we have to go back 24 seasons to find somebody to go from such a, a huge crash in one episode. That's that might that's probably that's a great that's it. It's probably John Carroll. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Oh my and god. And it's the same thing. He went crazy with power. Yeah, you, you know, I'm telling you that the, the, the Gollum thing happens on Survivor. It's like people get a little taste of the power, and like, I'm running the show now. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, they go crazy. I think that happened to Tyson and Token Chains. I mean, for, you know, I don't know if it, maybe if it was edited that way, but I definitely think I saw that happen to him a little bit. Oh, it happened uh, like uh, uh, like three or four times in Survivor the Amazon. Like, whoever thought they were running the show, it was like then the next week they were the next I mean, Dina. That happened to Dina, right? Yeah, that Dina really and Alex. Fun. Yeah, you could say the, uh, that happened to them too in Survivor the Amazon. Okay. Um, any, anything else b uh, from the episode uh, that you want to get into more before we get into questions? I know we got. Yes, I do. Questions. I would like to get into the star of the episode, who is Trish, who uh, is the one who saved the day. You know, Trish she, the fish. Trish the fish. Trish is getting the fishy. Um, Trish. Trish is the one who she says maybe I should talk to Cass. Tony's like, no, don't go talk. Don't go talk to Cass. And Trish is like, well, what if this thing with Sarah doesn't work out? Why don't I just talk to Cass as a backup option? I have a good relationship. Tony's like, no, don't do it. You know, I, I'm worried she'll play you. And Trish goes ahead anyway and talks to Cass and is like, hey, tell us who you want gone, and they're gone. And Cass says, you know, Sarah is the one I want gone. So Trish says, we're voting for Sarah. You do what you want. That is the perfect way to play this situation. You know, Trish says, who do you want gone? We will make it happen. You know, this is the exact opposite of what Sarah's doing. Sarah's saying, you know, here's who you have to vote. You have to vote my way. You have to do it my way. You have to, like, these are the only two people you're allowed to vote out. Uh, I mean, Trish played it perfectly. And, you know, I think Trish gets a lot of hate because, you know, her laugh is annoying or whatever. But, like, you know, you can't, you can't fault the way she played that move. Some people say she's transphobic. Why? <laughs> it's a long story. Uh, uh, Keith Dixon in the chat room says, "Trisha, Trisha." <laughs> there you go. Trish, Trish. Did you know that like fish is a word? And I'm just learning this in in drag queen lingo for a uh, uh, drag queen who looks a lot like a woman. Uh, there you go. Fish, those, are the, those are the best kind. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so let's see. Uh, so good job by Trisha. Yes. Uh, that good job getting her to switch over. All right, so uh, we're, we're going to get into your questions uh, in just one second, but Stephen, I, I, I need you to console me a little bit because uh, I got in all of these fantasy drafts before the season, and I took Sarah with my number one pick in all my fantasizer leagues. I did my draft with AJ Mass the other day, and uh, I took Sarah with my first pick in that draft. Basically, all of my Survivor fantasy drafts are shot, and I, I wish I could just start over. Who would you pick now? Who who would you pick right now to be the to be the go all the way? Boy, um, I feel like uh, I think I would go with LJ. I think LJ and Spencer are the two are the two ones to watch, right? I mean, I I think LJ too though. He's he's got the perfect sort of like he's not the big troublemaker. You know, who's going after LJ now with all his Tony shenanigans, Cash shenanigans? You know, there's there's other targets now, and LJ, in spite of being a huge dude, is not number one. Yeah. But Spencer's on the wrong side of the numbers. Maybe. I don't know. I mean, maybe. A lot of games um, to play. The, uh, what, what do you think? Is Sarah going to come back, Rob? Is Sarah someone we're going to see again? I, you know, I don't think that the body of work is there. You know, I, loved, I, I loved her. I thought she was great casting, but I, I just I don't think the body of work is there. Survivor loves a flipper, and Survivor loves someone who plays emotionally. So, well, uh, you know, I wish I had a mulligan on all of my Survivor drafting. If there was only a, if there was only some way to do Survivor drafts that could restart every single day, but that doesn't exist in Fantasy Survivor, but it does exist in Fantasy Baseball. And I want to take a second to thank our sponsors at DraftKings.com, uh, which is America's favorite one-day fantasy sports site, Stephen. Uh, on opening day, DraftKings.com awarded a half a million dollars in cash prizes in one in one day. Could you imagine that you go bust your ass for 39 days on no. Survivor? Yeah. 
a half a million dollars in one, one day. That's ridiculous. Baseball. Yeah, well, I people, starved for it didn't even get close to that. That's that's right. Well, people are winning big bucks on DraftKings.com, watching oh. uh, their favorite sport and playing fantasy. Uh, somebody somebody won a hundred grand in their first time ever playing. Uh, what? A hundred grand? Yeah, it's not true. That, it's, it's not uh, it's not a lie, Stephen. That could be me. That could be, I'm, I've never played, and that could be me, and I would like to win 100 grand. That could be you. So uh, for uh, DraftKings is for one-day fantasy sports. That means no season-long commitments, no being stuck with players, just instant cash every day. So pick a team in 10 minutes. Any sports fan can do it, Stephen, even you. Well, I'm not really a sports fan, but I'd still, I, would, I would get into sports for the sake of, of winning $100,000. I mean, this sounds great. So all right now, play for free. Uh, enter ROB at DraftKings.com and get a free entry into next week's contest with 400 grand in guaranteed cash Ooh, prizes. Lord. So uh, free spots are going quick. Enter ROB now at DraftKings.com. That's DraftKings.com. All right, let's get into some questions. Uh, Stephen, boy, you could be winning so so much cash. I know. This yeah. is great. This beats Survivor. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, beats podcasting. Uh, all, all right. So uh, let's – then I would just podcast for the love then. Yeah, yeah. All right. So let's get into uh, taking some questions, Stephen. Why don't you get us kicked off here with what Lisa has to say? All right. The Lisa says, as for half, I thought it was tacky that Tony at all cheered and clapped when Sarah was voted out. What are your thoughts on tribal council etiquette? Very yeah, good what time. the hell is that? What was that about? I've never seen that before. These people are so emotional. They're so they're so enthusiastic. They're making decisions at tribal council. They're clapping. They're applauding. Um, probably not the best idea to applaud the elimination of someone who's voting you out or who's going to vote for you to win. But people get emotional. You know, we saw it last season with Tyson saying that remark to uh, Katie Collins when she was on her way out. You know, uh, bet you like you know, bet you didn't wish you hadn't done that. You know, I I, I think that it's, it's 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 a normal thing. You know, it's it's a high stakes game. Yeah, the whole thing with that was um, it was like there was like, you know, the pendulum had totally swung the other way when they realized they were like all like pumped up. It's like, all right, we got we've got a, an idol for Tony. We got a, a, a immunity for Wu. We got an idol for LJ. Let's see the votes like, all right, first vote, Jeffra. Like, oh, <laughs> no, we lost. Oh, yeah. we lost the game. And then it's like, oh, the cast flipped like that. Yeah. I, it was great. I mean, and, and like, what I do, I, you know what I also love is when, like, the, the they were all, like, the one tribe was like, should we switch? We gotta switch. We gotta switch, right? And then and then Solana's like, should we stay the same? We should stay the same, right? Like, of course you're staying the same. But, like, they just wanted to, like, whisper too, you know? Like, they wanted to, like, get in all of, like, the decision making. Yeah, it's like, uh, let me know if I lose you on this one. It's sort of like it's like the guy from it's like the guy from the other team, like uh, you know, runs runs through and he is almost gonna get a, t a touchdown, but then he fumbles at the end zone, and then your guys pick it up. It's a, like a, a a complete turnaround of like a horrible thing happened and it turned around and it was a good thing. No, and then it fumbles again and it's going back your way. I mean, it was both. It was just it was such a roller coaster. Yes, that's what I mean. I think a bigger roller coaster than we've ever seen before. More reversals in that tribal council than we've ever. we've seen one reversal. But I don't no. think we've seen the double reversal before. Double reversal. Very tricky. Okay. Uh, let's go to Matthew Bilmis, who says, uh, who played a worse game tonight, Sarah or Cass? I'd say Sarah, but not by much. Okay. Well, I think this is a, uh, an easy answer that I feel Sarah played a worse game because she is out of the game. She's eating a cheeseburger. <laughs> if she's eating a cheeseburger, that means she played the worst game. I think that's pretty fair. I think if you're when you're out of, I mean, that's not always the case that if you're out of the game, you've played, you've made, you know, played the worst game. But in this case, that's probably just because of how precipitous her decline was. You know, how dramatic it was from uh, on top to gone. But even if she stayed in the game, I feel like her position would still be damaged because I kind of feel like the, you know, playing both sides in such a pivotal vote with so many having so many enemies left in the game if she does vote with them then you know she makes an enemy out of Tony Trish and Wu you know she really did sort of lead them along and I feel like that she would be in a, in a pretty bad spot with you know 10 people left in the game yeah I, I mean for sure for sure and you know it, it looks more appealing to be the swing vote than it actually maybe is in that situation to be the one caught between you know the actual person who's in the best position is not the swing vote but it's the person on who's at the top of the alliance that the swing vote joins. Yeah, it's hard to be the one-person swing vote when there's so many people left in the game. Yeah. Because, you know, and and it, again, I'm sure there are people going to call me hypocritical, but, you know, in Survivor, the, in Survivor the Amazon, 
I did flip from the men to vote with the women from Jabiru, but I flipped with like two other people. Right. And so when you're in that big of a group and you say, I'm going to take my two or three and all of us are going to flip over and then there's only a couple people that you end up screwing over and one of them doesn't even make the jury, I think that's fine. But when you just yourself switch, I think if there's more than you know seven people in the game, then you're making a lot of people mad at you. Uh, and, and that's exactly it. You're taking all the heat there. You know, and, and you're the focus of all the attention, and uh, you know it, it's uh, it's a dangerous position to be in. It's a, it's a hard one. So uh, you know, Sarah should have just hung tight. You know, it seemed like it seemed like it really seemed like the Solana folks had no expectation that she would rejoin them. You know, when they went over, there, she's like, you know, Tony was like, hey, can we you know re up it? We'd love to do that. She should have just been like, you know, I'm with I'm with these guys. Yeah, she did the classic, ah, I think I'm just going to, you know, decide a tribal council, which is exactly what Christy told me in Survivor of the Amazon. She said, I'm going to decide a tribal council. I'm like, whoa, uh, that's a non-starter for me. I'm not going to I'm yeah. not gonna wait around a tribal council for you to make a decision. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, I mean, I don't know if she meant that, but uh, here Sarah clearly did not mean she was going to decide That's a tribal code council. for I'm just not that into you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's like I'm washing my hair. I can't uh, go out Saturday. Uh, all right, here we go. Uh, Greg Barood wants to know, shouldn't Cass have just voted out Jeffra and then got Sarah in the next vote? Good question, Rob. What do you think? That's the right move for Cass, right? Yeah. yeah what was the hurry? I mean, vote out, Je vote out Jeffra tonight and then, you know, whatever. And I'm, I, that's the crazy thing is that she's clearly not – she's clearly just voting emotionally here. You know, obviously you vote out – you know, you, you use the swing vote and then you get rid of them. You know, it's, it's easy. And uh, I can't imagine that her alliance wouldn't have been totally on board with that. Yeah. No, we got a lot of a lot of stuff to uh, go over with Sarah and with Cass when we when we get to speak with them. A lot, yeah. a lot of. You know what? But like some of these people, like I listened to Lindsay's interview last week, and Lindsay's like, "Oh, so many people are calling me a hero for quitting, like and telling me they're they they were inspired by my quit." Like, no, they weren't. People, people, be real with yourselves in these interviews. <laughs> my God, we want to hear the real story, not your insane fictionalized version. <laughs> Yeah, well, Lindsay did the thing where uh, she really just asked herself a lot of questions. I, I, I honestly, I tuned out when she was like telling me what a hero she was to children on Twitter. Like that's just insane. Like you are no, no, and and peep mothers who are inspired by Lindsay and teaching their children like through Lindsay's example, you are horrible mothers. <laughs> oh no, Stephen. Yeah, yeah. Uh oh, no. I think maybe, maybe you went a little too far. All right, I apologize. You're, you're <laughs> fine, mothers, but you're wrong in this instance. Yes, that's that's better. Yeah, yeah. Better. All right, uh, let's go to the Martin V. Uh, he wants to know, uh, in your view, was Cass's vote of Sarah more strategic or was it more personal? I think we both agree that it was personal. Uh, personal, hundred percent. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, next question. Uh, all right, uh, Tim Lamister, the great Tim Lamister, wants to know. Uh, bigger swing vote failure, Sarah or Chris Christie from Amazon. Um, what, what do you think, Rob? You're the expert here. Well, I would say that Christie, because uh, Sarah's plan should have worked, that she was w voting on the right side. It was it was more Cass's uh, swing. Cass deciding to be the swing vote was the was the problem. Uh, right, right, absolutely. Yeah, um, that was that was the issue. I think she may hand hand. You know, I think that's. I think Sarah did do a better job than Christy because Sarah wasn't wishy-washy. Christy was wishy-washy. Sarah overplayed her position and basically said, I'm calling the shots. Christy uh, didn't care who got voted out. Right, right, yeah. Um, okay. All right, what does Caesar have? Uh, Caesar wants to know, what do you think is going to happen next week? Best move for Cass. What's going to happen to uh, the rest of the brains? Well... Uh, in my opinion, the best move for Cass may be trying to flip back to the brains. I mean, I think that if she sticks with the brawn, they're not taking her that far, you know? Like, Braun's got, you got Tony, you got Wu, you got Trish. They're, they've been together since day one. I think, I think you got to, I think Cass has got to do the, the, the double flip. Well, the problem here now is that she flipped at 11, so now it's going to be 5-5. Five, five. So now if she flips back, she's going to force a tie, and now we're back in the same situation where it's like, well, Cass, you need to vote with these guys because then it's going to be a tie. You're going to be drawing rocks. It still might be a better move for her than sticking with uh, the Braun tribe. No, I mean, 
I mean, you think Spencer is going to forgive her for, you know, even if she, they, even if they you then they'll use her for a vote or two, and then they'll vote her out because yeah, 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 they're not right. going to forget She's got to find in Rose and Braun. You're absolutely right. She's got to find in Rose and Braun. She's got to figure something else out. Um, you know what the move is? The move is for Cass to, like, go, like, two votes and then, like, create a whole other alliance, you know, from yeah. the bottom vote. That's yeah, the that, ideal move for Cass. Yeah, well, that's what she has to do. That's what yeah. – it, it's like she needs to, fi- you know, figure out, like, uh, you know, Wu, you're, you know, you're at the bottom, and it looks like Morgan is going to hate her, but Jeremiah, you know, she, if she could pick up those people – and when LJ, gets down, what about LJ and Jeffra? You know, they're at the bottom of the bra. I think alliance. Jeremiah is a more likely uh, person in her uh, alliance than... But the beauties, all of the beauties. Bring together the beauty tribe with Cass at your head, and, and that, that that's the move, Rob, is because because Jeffra and Jeremiah are two people in a five-person alliance. You know, you got... I'm sorry, Jeffra and LJ, and you got Jeremiah over on the other side. He's one person who nobody trusts. Uh, you you, you go, go with the beauties. Or you could do it the other way. You could sort of like drive a wedge between the beauty and the brawn, and she could side with the brawn. It seems like she has a natural ally in in Trish now. But the whole thing with LJ and Tony uh, giving each other their idols—that's that's almost a a, a, a fishback JT uh, level of bromance at that All point. Right. Well, okay, we'll see. We'll that's see if that happens. Yeah, that's hard. To um, all right, you want to take this one, Rob? All right, Samuel Peterson, was it a big mistake for LJ to play his idol for Tony? It was pretty obvious they weren't going to vote for Tony, and no one knew he had an idol. Um, your boy LJ, Stephen, did he screw up tonight? I honestly think that LJ did it out of, like, good old southern sort of, like, hospitality, you know, charm, like, or obligation. Uh, I know that he's from Boston. He's but, from you know, Boston! Yeah, but, but it's it's the style. It's the style is southern. It just means good. Um, it, he's as much from the south as he is a bearded mountain man. He's a country boy, all right, and that's the important thing. He's got honor, and he saw Tony give him his idol, and he's like, "Oh my God, Tony's gonna go out, and I'm gonna be wrong. I'm gonna be the big jerk." And uh, you know, I think I, the other thing is, if he thinks there's a chance that it's Tony, I think it's still the right move to give it to Tony because this is a, a high stakes moment when. Uh, Everything is on the line with his vote. And they, in their heads, were wrong thinking that they were the two targets because they're the two big guys. But it's a reasonable supposition. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, it's not a horrible move in that from that perspective. Like, well, better think, to... Go ahead. I think the issue here is that LJ is like, oh, Tony, ah. Uh, now, uh, all right, let me play my idol for Tony because if, 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 if Tony finds out after the fact that LJ had an idol and let Tony play his idol, Tony is so insane that he will come after LJ. So it was almost like he had to, like, it's a self-preservation. He's like, if Tony finds out that I had an idol and I let him play the idol and I, and I wasted his idol, he will kill me. <laughs> yeah, he'll plant evidence. Yeah, like, um, this isn't Malcolm and Reynolds, like, uh, where Malcolm could be like, ah, don't, you know, don't worry, and, and Reynolds like, no worries, bro. Uh, yeah. Tony will not forget this. Um, right, two more questions. Yeah. Ahmed Abdul, uh, Abdulal, uh, Abdulal says, uh, why does everyone say this was a bad move for Cass? Wouldn't this count as one of her big moves if she's sitting in the final two? What do you think? Can Cass spin this, Rob, saying, I made a big move? But I mean, if she if she can get to the finals, sure, of course she can spin it and say, "Hey, I I decided to go with with these people," but you know, it's it's just got a long road to get there. I I mean, really, we're so far away from the finals, and uh, she really needs to, you know, I I don't see a clear path for her to get there. The other thing is, let's remember, like, who wins the game is really determined by who's on the jury. Are they people who you pissed off, or are they people who supported you? You know, you. Uh, you know, you you look at you look at juries, you know, historically, and and when there's been a tight vote, it's like they're often voting out of anger as much more than they are voting for someone. So if Cass is there, and you know, it's all it's that that uh, Asari, Apari, Apari tribe that's sitting on the jury. You know, they're not voting for her, but if she somehow gets there with Apari, who knows? All right, one last question. This is from Ryan uh, Wangman. He wants to know who wins in a fight: Morgan's boobs or Cass's glasses? Really, really? This is we're, we're not going out on that. Give, next, <laughs> give, me, no, give me another question. Yeah. Give me another question. What is this like? Rock paper scissors? 
<laughs> Rocks, paper, scissors, lizard, Spock. Is that what it does? The uh, hipster carrot wants to know, do you think Tony has any chance at winning the game? How do you think the Tyler Perry idol will come into play? Well, let's just let's just only t- sorry, hipster carrot. We're only gonna we're gonna cut the bottom half off of that. Do you think Tony has a chance to win, Steven? Yeah, I absolutely think so. I think Tony has played with a lot of joy and enthusiasm. I think he's not, you know, I don't think he's pissed anybody off really. I mean, he had his like final five remark that seems to be, you know, echoing through the whole season, but. You know, I actually feel like Tony's he's a, he's a cop. He's got, like, a good story. He's hes played the game hard. I, you know, I definitely think he's a shot. Yeah, you know, people always point to the Russell thing about how even Natalie White beat Russell, that a, a Russell can't win the game. But I, I'm just going to go back to what I was talking about tonight where that Tony seems to have a good nature about him. And it really comes down to if people like you or not, they'll vote for you. Yeah. And, it does to- the question for me is, does Tony have enough charisma to overcome some of the you know ways that he's going to cross people in the game? And right now, I don't see any reason why Sarah, if she's on the jury, wouldn't vote for Tony. Sure. So I feel like uh, Tony has a chance to win the game. I don't think I, I would not bet on Tony, but I feel like that there definitely is, is a he has a shot. I would say a 10 to 15. Percent shot. I mean, your question does Tony have enough charisma? Like that's like you know Tony's got charisma in spades, right? Like that's Tony's number one quality is charisma. I, I feel like Tony sitting on the jury would just give like the best speech ever. I would love. I mean, on the on the finals, I would love to see Tony as a finalist and just like how he wins over that jury. Yeah, so it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be a fun ride. It's gonna be a fun yeah. ride. Um, all right. So Stephen Fishback, uh, you told us about about Trish. We can read more about that in your blog on people.com tomorrow. Uh, anything anything else? Any other sneak previews? No. I mean, it's just stuff we've talked about tonight, Rob. You know, I think Trish, it's, it's talking about Trish's gameplay and where tw- Trish went right uh, and obviously Sarah went wrong, uh, Cass went wrong, and uh, really basically everybody else went wrong. Okay. Should, it should be a lot of fun, of course, tomorrow. Uh, Moret Cass, definitely get your voicemails in with Nicole tonight. Uh Three two three two eight two R H A P or uh, for the high quality voicemails, go to robhaswebsite.com slash voicemail. Again, try to keep it around thirty seconds. That's the good. That's the good sweet spot for R H A P voicemail questions. Do you think voting out a fellow cop is easier or harder than voting out your mom? <laughs> I'll ask. That's a great question for uh, for uh, uh, the Morets tomorrow. The Moret and Easton combo. Easton. They're the, ones. They're the ones to ask that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And Steven, uh, I know you're pumped up. Game of Thrones Live uh, kicks off on Sunday, April 6th, 10.15 p.m. after 10.15 p.m. Eastern, uh, 7.15 p.m. Pacific uh, for after the Game of Thrones Season 4 premiere over on our sister site for serialized uh, re- TV recaps at postshowrecaps.com. That's awesome. Yeah, we also did a podcast the other day on the How I Met Your Mother finale. Do you partake in that? I, I heard everyone hated it. <laughs> Not the podcast. I'm sure the I, podcast was great, but the episode was bad. <laughs> yeah, I read in the chat in the chat room tonight that tonight's Survivor made somebody forget about how mad they were about the How I Met Your Mother finale. <laughs> So that was good. So we got a podcast up about that too on postshowrecaps.com. So uh, plus we covered the Walking Dead finale over there too. So check that out if uh, you're trying to kill time between now and all of tomorrow's Survivor podcast. Steven, have a great night, my friend. Uh, you too, buddy. Talk to you soon. All right, and everybody else, I will talk to you guys on Thursday. Have a good one. Thanks for all all the live uh, show support. Over a thousand people, which is pretty amazing here on a Wednesday night. And uh, subscribe to Rob has a podcast on YouTube at robhaswebsite.com slash YouTube or uh, for the iTunes feed, robhaswebsite.com slash iTunes. All right, Stephen. Take care, everybody. Have a great night. Bye. Bye bye. She's in our alliance. I have right. no reason to think that Cast is going to go out there and flip to the other side. I'm sure Tasha's, Tasha is like, you know, i got to make sure Sarah doesn't flip, i got to make sure Jeremiah doesn't flip, and little do we know that it's actually Cass is the one that is thinking about going to the other side. Well, I think this is actually an important lesson, and I think it's something that actually often gets lost on television, is that you do really need to pay attention to your allies. You know, like, just because you're in an alliance with someone, that person isn't with you forever. And you see, you know... I remember my, myself that you know there was a lot of times when I had to like go do extra things for my allies, and I got a lot of quit, uh, a lot of flack on 
on social media, like why why are you you know doing this for JT instead of for Aaron? Well, it's because I wanted to stick with JT. I I need I, JT was my ally, but like that only goes so far. If you're not tending to their feelings, they're gonna they're gonna feel jilted by you. And it's true, you've really got to show that extra love to your allies. And so you know, on the one hand, you say, well. Uh, you know, Cass is wrong because she didn't understand what Tosh was doing. Tosh also should have been like, hey, Cass, obviously you're with us. You know, obviously you're my number one. You know, you just need to, like, hit those beats with your allies. You know, how funny is it that this big debate we had in the second episode, uh, or was it the third episode, of what should we do? you keep Spencer or do you keep Jatia? And it's like, well, Spencer's not going to be loyal to Cass and Tasha. Uh, they need to keep Jatia around. It's like, oh, wait, how about this? Cass isn't going to be loyal to Tasha and Spencer. <laughs> You're so right. So, oh, man, Spencer's the only one with his head screwed on straight. I mean, I would say Spencer is like a, a lock to win, but I, I've got no, you know, absolutely no well, desire to predict anymore. Well, he's got a real uphill battle after tonight. It's, it's a long it's, road, but I don't think, you know, I thought Cass is a little, like, cute. Chaos Cass is a little cute remark, remark at the end. Well, that's a, you know, long way to the end was, I don't think she's 100%, you know, with, with Solana now. I think she's smarter than that. Well, now she's got to, you know, she's got to, you know, Sesternino it up a little bit, you know. Oh, now okay. gotta, is that, is that the you know, She's going yeah. to bounce around now. The problem yeah. is, you know, in my in Survivor the Amazon, re in reality, you know, I said, okay, I'm going to start swinging around at 7. It's a different game to start swinging around at 11, you know. Yeah, like a yeah. longer way to swing to the end. Like, I started, you know, swinging back and forth at 7, and, you know, spoiler, I didn't make it to the end, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, so to start to start this game of okay, I'm gonna vote with these people this week and this people this week, this people this week, like you know, it's gonna be tough. And can anybody trust Cass in the game? I mean, now, the good you thing. Know, I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. The thing she has in her favor is who's voting out Cass. You know it, that you would think at the very least she has. You know, okay, they're gonna vote out the other four people. You know, if we have a pagonging here, which I still don't think is going to be the case, um, she still has four more weeks to sort of work something out. And even then, when you get down to this group plus Cass, are they really going to turn on Cass first? I don't know. Like, I feel I'm, like not, oh, I'm not sure, problem. Rob. Like, it's a classic move that the person who flips gets voted out next because the new alliance doesn't need them and their old alliance doesn't want them. You know, I, I, it's a, it's just class. You, you, Candace Woodcock, it happened to her in Heroes vs. Villains. It happened to John Fincher in Samoa. It uh, happens, and uh, uh, not. I don't. I think Cochran actually lasts a little longer, but it often happens that right after you flip, you're gone the next episode. So uh, it's a it's a dangerous position. Well, on the subject of chaos, Cass, uh, do you buy the theory that Stephen that uh, that if you create enough chaos, chaos is a ladder that could take you all the way to the top? Um, is that <laughs> did someone say that? Is that was that a confessional? That, that's the little finger theory. <laughs> oh. oh. I mean, that's. I feel like that's more Tony's Tony's perspective than Cass's. That's yeah. definitely the Russell perspective, right? Burn the socks, you know, douse the fire, uh, whatever. Save the dog, whatever his strategy is. Okay, uh, let's talk about the immunity idol. And uh, so we do get the Tyler Perry idol. It is in play, the idol with special powers, but uh, it doesn't look like anybody really made a fuss about it in this episode. I'm still in my heart of hearts hoping that that's not actually what the immunity idol does. Like, I'm praying, and I know everyone says it is, but if they do that, like, that broke the C Yule season. You know, it, like, ruined the season because it destroyed strategy. And uh, I really I really hope that's not the case. That would just suck. Well, I'm telling you that it, it is the case because well, Jeff Probst sucks. Sucks, sucks told us it was. That sucks! Yes, I'm sorry. I'm yeah. sorry. No, well, I'm not happy about it, Rob. It's going to have a season of Redemption Island and all Hanses, and everyone gets their own super Tyler Perry idol. That's where this is going. Yeah, I, th I think that's where it's going. Yeah. Um, how about, let's see, also uh, from the episode, um, did you feel like the other people, Tasha and Spencer in particular, where were they for, like, the... Um, from the time that we see Tasha sort of try to squelch the beef between Sarah and Cass. Like, where were they during all of this? Did they not have any suspicion that Cass was actually double-dealing? I mean, I think you know, like, how crazy the merge is, right? We're seeing a very small portion of it, but, like, you got to assume everyone is scrambling with everyone. I mean, you know, when Trish says, I've got a good relationship with Sarah, like, uh, 
you do? I mean, I guess they've been together for, you know, uh, I'm sorry, with uh, with cats, you know, like, why, how is that possible? You know, you've known each other for five minutes, as far as I can tell. Um, but but uh, with Sarah, she doesn't like Sarah's demands. She Sarah calls her a bully. She doesn't like being called a bully. Tasha's being nice to Sarah. Cass wants people to be nice to her. So she's acting out of emotion, not reason. She wants Sarah gone because she wants her friends to be friends with her again. Um, and, and you look at it, and at least from the viewer's perspective, Sarah, at right now, before she flips, has a lock on the final three. She's in the core alliance of the majority alliance. Her six is ready to take out the other five, and then she's in with that three brains tribe. So if she doesn't flip, it really looks like Sarah, has, uh, that Cass, I'm sorry, has a very good shot at the end game. Um, by flipping, suddenly everyone hates Cass, and uh, and she's got a very slim shot at the end game. Now, I know I'm going to put myself in the position of a viewer, a viewer with a long memory and a long time Robert's podcast listener, who is going to say potentially, "Hey, Rob, I remember a couple of years ago, you know, two and a half years ago, at the time of the merge in Survivor South Pacific." John Cochran pulled a pretty similar move here. Sure. And at the final 12, he left Savai'i to vote with uh, Upolu. Is that right? That's uh, right. And he, to give that to eventually to not pull rocks and to avoid a tie and to vote with coaches group. And while Steven said all along that was a bad move for Cochran, Rob, you applauded the move. And you said that was a good move for Cochran. Now, we all yeah. know how it, how it worked out. And it didn't turn out to be that great a move. Right. But sticking, right. sticking, there, sticking with Savai'i wasn't, wasn't so great either. And so if you're that person, you're saying, well, what is the difference? Why did you think that was a good move for Cochran at that time? And why do you think this is a bad move for Cass? And I think the reason is because Cochran correctly perceived that he was at the bottom of Savai'i. And he was probably the sixth person in that six-person alliance. Whereas Cass, I believe, has incorrectly perceived her place in the six-person uh, tribe of the new of the new form Apari, where she thinks, "Oh, Sarah's the leader now," and now Tasha has gone off with, and she was like a jilted lover, and she acted irrationally to hurt Sarah and not move in the best interest of the Alliance. And I think that's where Cass screwed up. Well, well, Rob, there's another huge difference between Cochran's move and Cass's move, and that's right now in the game, Cass's his Alliance had a 6-5 to five majority. When Cochran made his flip, they were 5-5 five to five split. So Cochran was going to have to go to rocks and maybe risk being rocked out of the game, you know, for an Alliance he didn't care about, uh, versus Cass... She has the numbers. Next week, it's 5-5, five to five, or if Cass is fully flipped, it's 6-4. to four. We don't know where Cass stands now, uh, now that Sarah's out of the game. But uh, Cass is taking a dominant alliance position and making it, at best, a wash. And uh, Cochran was flipping from, uh, from a, a deadlock. You know, I mean, as bad as I thought his move was then, I think uh, Cass is worse here. Yeah, I agree, because uh, for the reasons that you just said, that's even, even better. And th the worst part is that they completely outmaneuvered the new, the new Solana tribe at that tribal council. Oh my because God. they played two idols, and they still had the, ro the wrong person. And I have to say, Spencer particularly sold that brilliantly. Because that they... So Tony plays his idol, but he played it for LJ. I liked when he says... Uh, Jeff, I'd like you to uh, validate my idol over here, and uh, like it's a like it's parking ticket. No, um, it's you. You he's got Jeff, such you, a great sense of humor. Validate here. Um, so he goes ahead and does that, and then LJ totally uh, in a hold up road like moment says, oh, "No, I want to play my idol for Tony." And they're like, you know, infinity fiving each other, and Spencer's like, "Oh, oh no, oh no!" They're all like, look like they're so pissed. And they had it perfectly that they had Jeffra. Uh, well, I, you know, I, I, it does seem like they switched it to Jeffra. Like, I feel like they actually probably were pissed that Tony had an idol at that moment because their plan was to take out Tony. But when when um, LJ played his idol, they all looked like, oh, like... Uh, they, oh, right, 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 right. Yeah, um, so he did a good job of selling that to the home audience. Um, 
the uh, I, I I gotta say this is why I love Tony. I know Tony gets on some people's nerves, but like for me, this like his sense of theater, the fact that he first he pulls it out, or like, first he says I have the idol, then he pulls it out, then he gets it validated by Jeb, then he plays it, but on someone else. Like Tony gets that it's a show. He's making it fun to watch. I love Tony and his his like big theatrical moves. And yes, he was wrong. He was wrong twice. Um, and he was wrong about. You know, the fact that he could sway Sarah, he was wrong about just the fact of the idol, he was wrong about, you know, playing it on LJ, but uh, he's he's got so much theater and, and so much fun, I just love watching him. Yeah, and I'll tell you the difference between Tony and, and Russell Hance is that where Russell Hance would be mean-spirited at time and sometimes would get into, like, the personal attacks, or this person's a bitch, and this person is stupid, and this person is whatever, uh, Tony really doesn't give us that. You know, it really is... Seemingly so far, it's all about the game, and he hasn't gotten nasty about anybody in the confessionals. And I feel like if you can keep it in the mischief part of the game, yeah, I'm a liar, I'm this and whatever, but I'm having fun as a. Hold on. Yes, that's right. It's the Survivor Know It Alls are here live on a Wednesday night after Survivor Merge, and oh my God. Uh, it was the old uh, swing vote switcheroo, and we're going to break it all down here live. First, let's, let's bring in uh, the man who gets a fishy award every week for outstanding analysis. Uh, here he is, and he hates people who flip at the merge. Stephen Fishback. Rob, what an incredible episode. I was actually shouting at the television. I feel like this has to be one of the most twisty tribal councils we have ever seen, with more reversals, more switches, more last-minute shenanigans than, than than maybe ever. Like seriously, m maybe ever. I too soon for the hyperbole. We got we that we got too no, much. No, the hyperbole. This is exactly when you go with the hyperbole. It's like right now, and then you you know you have more like reasoned assessments later. It's Now's like you, the time. No, you and I are like uh, crime scene. We're like CSI. We're like crime scene investigators, and now we just gotta walk in, and there's like a house, and there's just dead bodies everywhere, and now we yeah, just need yeah, to like, sort like of, oh like, my god, go dead through. bodies everywhere. What what's your reaction? That's the human response. Yeah, we got we gotta start like swabbing stuff. We gotta start making chalk outlines of people, and yeah. uh, but we gotta sort it all out. We gotta send things back to the lab. So. So much to get through here live on a Survivor Know It All's Wednesday. Thank you guys so much for joining us here live. Uh, we've got uh, almost a thousand people uh, now that are joining us here live on a Wednesday night to talk about uh, a very crazy episode of Survivor. We've got the chat room, hashtag RHAP, and you can also leave your comments on our YouTube channel at uh, robhaswebsite.com slash YouTube. And if you want to watch this after the fact in the video version, if you're listening to us on the audio feed, you can always do so on that same YouTube channel. Okay, Stephen. So, uh, really, really uh, exci exciting night. Of course, we are going to speak with Sarah tomorrow morning. My pick. Very sad to see her go. Oh, I've been saying every week, I've been saying Sarah's going to win it. I know based on the editing, based on my understanding of the game, Sarah's going to win it all. I see the edit, and I was so wrong. I have to eat crow. I, was, I just knew nothing this time around. Yeah, you know nothing, Stephen Fishback. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we'll we'll talk about everything that happened, and of course, then on Thursday we will have our podcast with it's a Moret cast, Stephen, Laura, and wow. Sierra on oh, one podcast. Moret. So you're gonna be like a Rob sandwich, like she, like Sarah was a Sarah <laughs> yeah. sandwich, but yeah, Rob sandwich coming up tomorrow, uh, and then we'll, so we'll get those questions up for you guys uh, to ask the Morets on Facebook. Technically, uh, Sierra's in Easton, but you know what I mean. And then we're gonna ha also have the Survivor voicemail segment. Nicole's gonna be with us for the voicemails, and we're going to do them early in the day on Thursday. So get those calls in uh, either tonight or as early as you can on Thursday morning, uh, either at robhaswebsite.com slash voicemail or 323-282-RHAP. All right, Stephen, we're, I guess we got to start off here with Chaos Cass. Wow. Uh, in full what, effect. what terrible play. Let's just, I think also, so, as twisty and turning as that tribal council was, I think we can agree that it was some of the worst play we've ever seen. Am I frozen or are you frozen? One of us is frozen. Okay. No, some of the gone. worst play we've ever seen in the history of, show, of the show. And I think, you know, Chaos Cass has got to be up there, right? So you're saying that in general, Cass's play in this episode was some of the worst play, or is Sarah also? Oh, Sarah, Cass, LJ, and Tony. Like, what is going on? Everyone's voting for the wrong person. 
And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll talk about who gets the fishy later on, Rob, but you, you may not be who you suspect. Okay, great. Well, let's talk about uh, this decision on Cass's, because uh, Cass seems very happy with herself. She feels like this is a great move. I think you agree with me that this is not a great move. Not at all a great move. As Spencer immediately says, you know, no chance you're going to win the game now, Cass. And, uh, you know, historically that's... I don't want to say that about Cass, because I now believe I know nothing about Survivor. No, I, I don't want to say that for sure about Cass. No chance she wins the game, but... Uh, historically, people who flip from one alliance to another uh, alienate their alliance horribly. They lose all those votes. They've pissed off every one alliance. They're in. They're not about useful to the other alliance. Um, so uh, it's it's a tough one. Well, it's very ironic also to have Spencer tell Cass, "See, you have zero chance to win the game." Because oh, yes. in the preseason, famously Jeff Probst said about Spencer, "Just a zero point zero percent chance to win wow. the game." So, uh, so there, there could be, like, Cass could have a better chance than Spencer due to, like, 0 0.1, like, if she's at 0 0.2. And uh, not only, so um, Cass has a 0% chance to win the game. Spencer has 0, 0.0, and 0, 0.0 is the emoticon for Morgan. Did you know that? <laughs> so uh, let's just talk about why this was bad. Because I think to a lot of people at home, they feel like, oh, what a great move. Vote out the swing vote. Uh, was didn't that, didn't somebody do that on Survivor the Amazon one time? Oh boy, said, man. Uh, boy talking about that in ten years, huh? Yeah, why don't why don't we vote out the swing vote? It's a it's a great play, but it's not a great play for everybody. And for Cass, let's talk about why that's a bad move for Cass. Well, so the reason it's such a bad move for Cass, Rob, is that she. You know, she's not acting strategically, right? Like, let's just talk about her motivation first and foremost. She's acting because she's annoyed. Opposed to, you know, you know, tell us horrible things about these people that we're also voting out. I feel like uh, Tony's in, in a good spot right now. And, and, you know, some of his reads were dead on. You know, when, when Sarah says, you know, I'm going I'm to make up my mind at Tribal Council, you know, Tony correctly says, like, oh, come on. Like, don't, don't feed me that. I, I know you're not with me. If you're telling me you're going to make up your mind at tribal council, you know, like, and uh, you know the way he and he was almost like generous with, you know, when I think it was Trish was like complaining about how a party was just like kowtowing to Sarah, and Tony's like, yeah, of course they are, and we should be doing that too. Like she's the swing vote, we need her. He, you know, he's got good reads on people. Yeah, no, he's done, he's done very good, and I think at I certainly underestimated him in the preseason and probably through uh, a lot of the season because he's such a character and, you know, at times comes off as two-dimensional. But the guy does really have an understanding of the game. Do I think he's the, you know, you know the, the greatest player ever? No. And, and is he, do I think he's going to win the game? Probably not. But I think that he definitely is a above-average player, Stephen, and, and maybe... Could by the end of the season we could call him a great player. I, I, you know what? It's possible. I mean, great, great, yeah, maybe, but it's possible. And he's got so much energy. And I feel like I really feel like there's no question Tony's coming back. Bring him back. Like Tony, Bring him back. Tony season two is gonna knock everyone's socks off. We're on Team TV. Yeah. On the know it all. Yeah. Okay. Now, almost lost in all of this, talking about how bad of a move we thought Cass made is we have have not even begun to scratch the surface of the horrible night for Sarah. Horrible, horrible night. She goes from being everyone's pick to being the one voted out. And uh, uh, Rob, as you said, the swing vote, you know, Survivor of the Amazon, you know, if you play both sides, you're going to piss people off. Well, there is something to this, and this is not just true about Survivor, but also in life of, oh, I'm in a good spot here. And Sarah totally overplayed her position. Uh, here and so she really is like trying to say, well, what are you guys going to give me? Well, what what are you guys going to give me over here? I'm going to call all the shots, and now, I, if, well, if I go over here, I want to decide who goes home. And she does it in such a way she refers to herself as I'm the president, <laughs> I'm, I'm in charge, she's the, she's the queen, right? <laughs> I'm the queen, and she also not only that, her reads are really bad. That she's mm -hmm. insisting, she's like, no. The vote is either going to be Tony or it's going to be LJ. Like those guys, they don't have idols, yeah. and that's and, and everyone's like, ah, what about Jeffra? And like, no, no, that's stupid. We're that's terrible. That's a horrible idea. 
And Jeffra is exactly the right person to vote out in that situation. You know, like anyone watching this, if you're a longtime Survivor viewer, you know that the person to vote out is the side person in the alliance. They're not going to play the idol on her. In Surv Survivor Samoa, another great parallel uh, where, you know, they all, I think it was like, uh, John Fincher, the great John Fincher suggested, hey, or maybe it was Cardona suggested, why don't we vote for Kelly? You know, there's no way she has the idol and, and uh, Dave Ball's like, no, we're voting for Russell Hance and uh, uh, you know, then Russell planned the idol and he played it on himself. You know, it's a great idea and Spencer tries to get it through to his credit. It's a great idea to try to vote out the person who is that ancillary side person and Sarah uh, to her discredit and ultimately to her, to her you know, eviction uh, is it will refuse to let that happen. Really, for Sarah and Cass, it was like a night where two two wrongs just made did not make a right for either of them. <laughs> no, but they both they both could not get over this uh, this feud, and it really just tore apart this group. It was uh, a really terrible job from the beginning of the episode where Cass and Sarah are having the conversation, and I summed it up on Twitter. It was really a battle of Tell me versus show me, where right. Sarah's like, "Hey, I'm with you guys," and well, Cass is like, "Well, that's great, but you know, don't flip on us because you know all you did was one vote." And she and Sarah's like, "Well, why, hey, what what gives? Because I I I said I'm with you guys. Well, why are you questioning me?" And so it really just devolved from there. And at no point did either person say, "Okay, long term, what you know, what's best?" There was no reason for Cass to think that Sarah was flipping on this vote, and it. You can make an argue for what Cass did if she thinks that Sarah was going to flip on them, but there was no evidence to support that Sarah was going to flip. Well, and, you know, I was, and, and you're right that it started at the start of the episode, and I agreed with Cass at the beginning. You know, Sarah's like, how dare you question me, and Cass is saying, well, you haven't really made a tough vote with us. Of course I don't trust you yet. You know, like, that's a very reasonable assumption. I mean, what's not smart or reasonable is to tell someone, of course I don't trust you yet, uh, and then... What's even less smart is for that other person to react to that with like such volatility, for Sarah to suddenly like freak out about it, you know, and then just like the emotional escalation from there. And you had that long fight with Tosh at the water, where Tosh is just trying to placate everyone, and these people are just reacting so emotionally. And Cass, at that moment, I was really surprised by her because Tosh is obviously trying to placate Sarah. She's obviously trying to tell Sarah what she wants to hear. And Cass takes it so personally, like, well, you're taking Sarah's side. Like, they sounded like two little children. Yeah, I totally agree. I read it exactly the same way, where Tasha was like, okay, well, she, it was like, Tasha's like, okay, I get it that Sarah is the swing boat. Let's not piss off Sarah right now. Let's tell Sarah whatever she wants to hear, because Cass is good. You know, I, I think that's probably just it, right? Like, they were, there was just so much stuff happening, and, you know, at the end, it just, it just happened too fast. Yeah. Boy, Sarah really just uh, how qu what a quick spiral this was. I mean, c can you think of anybody in recent memory that went from such a good position where coming into the episode, we said uh, they probably have, you know, if not the best chance, the second best chance to win the game to being out? No. <laughs> I, 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 I'm trying to think of someone who fell apart. I mean, you know, I mean, there was a Corinne moment in. Uh, Karamoan, where like you know she just totally flubbed it, but that was different, you know. Yeah, like, we didn't think that Corinne was gonna win the game. Yeah, and you know like, that was like an insurrection that had a chance of succeeding and it failed. Um, yeah, I mean you know Aris was doing, but no, yeah, Aris was never you know he always looked like he was about to ready for a downfall. I don't think so, Rob. Yeah, this the Aris really something... thing was was like three episodes in the making. We saw a lot of people saying like, "Hey, we gotta we gotta get out." Uh, you know, Jervis and Ar and Tyson were talking about it for a while. Like, I can't think of the person. Uh, no. Maybe uh, not since Hunter Ellis. Is it? I mean, it's got to be somebody since then. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, let, let us know. Like, leave us a message saying who the, who's who's had a worse and, and more precipitous spiral than Sarah. Yeah. Marion Silva says JT, uh, maybe for, from heroes versus villains. But the JT thing that JT didn't even get voted out in the episode that they wrote that letter. Like that was and, it took a whole another week. So that was like over two weeks that he and went. The thing, to the bad spot. Okay. And the other thing was in JT and heroes versus villains was like skating on thin ice. You know, he was bouncing from alliance to alliance. You you saw that something was about to catch up to him. You know, and he just didn't have didn't have the certain special something 
that he had in Toga Chains. I wish I could put my finger on what that was. But yeah, not thing, but like, yeah. Marion Silva and uh, Jose Salgado say John Carroll. Boy, we have to go back 24 seasons to find somebody to go from such a, a huge crash in one episode. That's that might that's probably that's a great that's it. It's probably John Carroll. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Oh my and god. And it's the same thing. He went crazy with power. Yeah, you, you know, I'm telling you that the, the, the Gollum thing happens on Survivor. It's like people get a little taste of the power, and like, I'm running the show now. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, they go crazy. I think that happened to Tyson and Token Chains. I mean, for, you know, I don't know if it, maybe if it was edited that way, but I definitely think I saw that happen to him a little bit. Oh, it happened um, like uh, like three or four times in Survivor the Amazon. Like, whoever yeah. thought they were running the show, it was like then the next week they were the next week. I mean, Dina. That happened to Dina, right? Yeah, Dina and cool. Alex. Yeah, you could say the, uh, that happened to them too in Survivor the Amazon. Okay. Um, any, anything else b uh, from the episode uh, that you want to get into more before we get into questions? I know we got. Yes, I do. Questions. I would like to get into the star of the episode, who's Trish, who uh, is the one who saved the day. You know, Trish she, the fish. Trish the fish. Trish is getting the fishy. Um, Trish. Trish is the one who she says maybe I should talk to Cass. Tony's like, no, don't go talk. Don't go talk to Cass. And Trish is like, well, what if this thing with Sarah doesn't work out? Why don't I just talk to Cass as a backup option? I have a good relationship. Tony's like, no, don't do it. You know, I, I'm worried she'll play you. And Trish goes ahead anyway and talks to Cass and is like, hey, tell us who you want gone, and they're gone. And Cass says, you know, Sarah is the one I want gone. So Trish says, we're voting for Sarah. You do what you want. That is the perfect way to play this situation. You know, Trish says, who do you want gone? We will make it happen. You know, this is the exact opposite of what Sarah's doing. Sarah's saying, you know, here's who you have to vote. You have to vote my way. You have to do it my way. You have to, like, these are the only two people you're allowed to vote out. Uh, I mean, Trish played it perfectly. And, you know, I think Trish gets a lot of hate because, you know, her laugh is annoying or whatever. But, like, you know, you can't, you can't fault the way she played that move. Some people say she's transphobic. Why? <laughs> it's a long story. Okay. Uh, uh, Keith Dixon in the chat room says, Trisha, Trisha. <laughs> there you go. Trish, Trisha. There you go. Trish, Trish. Did you know that, like, fish is a word, and I'm just learning this, in, in drag queen lingo for a, a drag queen who looks a lot like a woman? Uh, there you go. Fish, those, are the, those are the best kind. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so let's see. Uh, so good job by Trisha. Yes, uh, that, good job getting her to switch over. All right, so uh, we're, we're going to get into your questions uh, in just one second, but Stephen, I, I, I need you to console me a little bit because uh, I got in all of these fantasy drafts before the season, and I took Sarah with my number one pick in all my fantasizer leagues. I did my draft with AJ Mass the other day, and uh, I took Sarah with my first pick in that draft. Basically, all of my Survivor fantasy drafts are shot, and I, I wish I could just start over. Who would you pick now? Who who would you pick right now to be the to be the go all the way? Boy, um, I feel like uh, I think I would go with LJ. I think LJ and Spencer are the two are the two ones to watch, right? I mean, I I think LJ too though. He's he's got the perfect sort of like he's not the big troublemaker. You know, who's going after LJ now with all his Tony shenanigans, Cash shenanigans? You know, there's there's other targets now, and LJ, in spite of being a huge dude, is not number one. Yeah. But Spencer's on the wrong side of the numbers. Maybe. I don't know. I mean, maybe. A lot of games um, to play. The, uh, what, what do you think? Is Sarah going to come back, Rob? Is Sarah someone we're going to see again? I, you know, I don't think that the body of work is there. You know, I loved, I, I loved her. I thought she was great casting, but I, I just I don't think the body of work is there. Survivor loves a flipper, and Survivor loves someone who plays emotionally. So, well, uh, you know, I wish I had a mulligan on all of my Survivor drafting. If there was only, a, if there was only some 